Albert Einstein famously labeled this the eighth wonder of the world. And it's one of the things that Warren Buffett attributes to his entire empire too. Today we're talking about compound growth. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm embracing this for my own personal property portfolio to eventually create me an ability to create either a million dollars or a $50,000 a year passive income in 15 years time. This is not a get rich quick scheme. It's more about making a sound investment decision based on strong fundamentals and having some patience. So let's go. So today's video is a little bit different. I've done a lot of stock videos recently and I thought it was time to actually change pace a bit and circle back to one of my other wealth building strategies and that is investing in property in Australia. I love investing in stocks and talking about companies as you guys know if you're already subscribed to my channel. But if you're not yet, hit that red subscribe button below. I personally started investing in property before stocks and starting my own business and I've actually used it to form kind of the foundation of my long-term plan to financial freedom hopefully one day. So in this video, I'm going to go over a few key things. One, why property investment? Two, a quick overview of the Australian property market itself. And three, my two property strategy that I aim to actually give me either a million dollars cash or provide me a $50,000 passive income for life in 15 years time. And I'm going to show you the investments that I've made. So let's kick off with why investing in property in the first place. So I personally started investing in Australia back in 2013 and I grew my portfolio pretty aggressively while I was working here in Singapore and saving as much money as I possibly could and paying quite low taxes as well. So today I would say that I've transitioned more to the consolidation phase of my property investing journey where I've basically purchased what I feel like I need to and actually starting to now pay down the debt and wait for capital growth and compound growth to do its thing. So through my own research and engaging buyers agents, I've also done my best to try and buy the most sound investments with the right property fundamentals, such as location, demographics, infrastructure, and essentially owner occupy appeal, you know, people wanting to live there. And I engage the use of buyers agents quite often to actually help me find the right properties to invest in. I can share more about that buying experience if you want me to, just let me know in the comment section below. So I personally see property investment as kind of a long-term wealth creator. And it can be something that really creates millions of dollars in growth if you buy well and essentially have the patience to wait. It's the age old story of who wouldn't want to have purchased their parents' property or the property that you grew up in 20, 30, 40 years ago, right? So everyone's got to start somewhere, which is why I made that decision to buy these two properties in Australia to start. So on to part two, a quick overview of the Australian property market. Now this is for both Aussies as well as Singaporeans because Singaporeans can still invest in Australia but there are only specific properties types that you can actually buy. So before I share my specific property investments, I wanted to actually show you why I invested in property in Australia besides the fact that obviously I'm from there. So in Australia, the housing market has actually shown some extraordinary changes over the past 25 years with conditions moving through actually five distinct growth cycles which have actually overall pushed the overall national median house price 412% higher in the last 25 years, providing homeowners with this significant wealth boost just through their own home. So this capital gain over the past 25 years in Australia actually equates to an annual compounded growth rate of about 6.8% for houses and about 5.9% for units. So if we expand that out to the last 40 years, this is still about 7% growth year on year. Now obviously I can't personally rely on history repeating itself but there's a very good chance that it actually will because property still remains as a fundamental shelter need for people and the Australian property market did have its fair share of doom and gloom in media during the pandemic this year but the actual impact on property values itself has actually been pretty minimal so far showing the resilience of the Australian property market in Australia and actually currently and looking forward into 2021 it's pretty optimistic with a lot of pent up demand, a lot of government stimulus and also record low interest rates actually putting a floor and potentially a rocket under the Australian property market for the next couple of years. So on to part three which is my two property strategy that I'm actually using to give me either a million dollars in cash or provide a $50,000 passive income for life. So how am I going to do this? So people in Australia have become really wealthy over time simply by holding onto good property assets over a long period of time and to actually allow compound growth to do its thing for all their investments and their own home as well. So it's all about time in the market and allowing growth on growth on growth to actually make you money while you sleep. 
So now I'm gonna show you guys specific examples of the two properties that I've bought. So the first property is in Brisbane in a suburb called Chermside West. So Chermside West is a suburb about 10 to 15 kilometers outside from the CBD in a typical kind of Brisbane suburban area. So this property has four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a garage for two cars. It sits on a piece of land about 600 square meters. And I bought this property back in 2014 for $511,000. This property itself was pretty run down when we first bought it, so we did spend about $20,000 to give it a fresh coat of paint, rip up the carpets, polish the floorboards, and redo some of the tiling in the bathrooms as well. And what that enabled us to do was increase the rent, as well as increase some of the potential capital gains of the property itself as well. So we did end up refinancing this property and we got it revalued after we did the renovation and actually got revalued at close to $600,000. So the second property that I purchased is in Adelaide in South Australia. The suburb is called Furl, which is about five to seven kilometers outside the CBD. And this property is again, a fairly old property. It has three bedrooms, one bathroom and a two car garage, but it sat on a 900 square meter block. So a pretty decent sized piece of land. This property itself I bought back in 2015 and it cost me $640,000. So both of these properties are not flash, they're established properties on decent pieces of land and located in inner to middle rings from their respective CBDs. Both of these properties, I put down a 20% deposit, which I saved while I was here in Singapore, and I ended up borrowing the rest from the bank. So yields in Australia, which is basically the money that you collect from rent, is varies between two to 5% generally. And with interest rates currently at historic lows and mortgage rates hovering around three to 4% for my own personal portfolio, it's actually not that expensive currently to actually service an investment property. So if you look at this example, which I've used for my Brisbane property, if I switch to interest only on my loans, it's essentially costing me about $2,000 a year to hold the property after all the costs associated with maintaining the mortgage and um, property agent fees, as well as maintenance as well. So right now I'm paying principal and interest as I wanted to actually start paying down my debt, but this is potentially what it could look like if you were to switch to an interest only and purchase a property today. So let's apply a long-term average growth rate of 5%, which based on the long-term growth averages in Australia of six to 7%, it's considered very much possible based on the historic performance of the market. So using that $500,000 example from my Brisbane property, after 10 years, it would be worth over $775,000. That's a gain of over $275,000 or a 55% increase in value without me doing a thing, just maintaining that $2,000 a year um, in terms of the holding cost itself. But after 20 years, the property will be worth over 1.26 million. Therefore, in the first decade, the property increased in value by 275,000. But in the second decade, it actually increased by 487,000 because growth has actually been earned on the growth from the first decade. This is the beauty of compound growth. If you hold it for another further 10 years, the property's value increases to over $2 million. That means you make over $785,000 in those last 10 years. Even if I drop the projected growth rate to just 4%, I'm still gonna make over a million dollars of capital growth alone on just one of these properties, given enough time, obviously three decades. But like I mentioned, property is a long-term game. And if you can get in today and hold that property and have patience, this is the kind of gains that you can actually get. Now you might think $2 million for a suburban house in Brisbane is absolutely ridiculous. But if we rewind it back 30 years from today, at that time, people would have thought, $500,000, which I purchased the Brisbane property for, would have been ridiculous as well at that time. So it's all relative. And again, it's just about buying the right asset and having patience to wait. So if I bring this projected growth together with my holding costs every year, the plan looks like this. So in 15 years time, each property will actually have about $450,000 in terms of capital growth at that 5% growth rate that I mentioned. So essentially almost doubling in price. So I'm actually gonna make over $900,000 in capital growth alone when I actually combine both of these properties together, which will be enough to fully offset the loans. That will be enough to fully offset the loans on both and thus enable me option to either sell both and realize close to a million dollars in cash and retire or actually refinance the properties at that time, keep them and continue enjoying the capital growth and at the same time, enjoy collecting rent from both properties, which by then well, I would expect to be well over $50,000 a year in positive passive rental income. So as you can see, the key to profiting from compound growth and property investment is generally time and buying the right asset. 
the earlier anyone starts to actually build their property portfolio, the longer that they actually have to hold onto the property and the faster they can actually accumulate wealth in the long term. While it may not take a huge effect immediately, compound growth actually increases larger and larger amounts each year as you get uh, further and further down the track. And this snowball effect can actually give a huge impact on growing your wealth. Warren Buffett himself didn't get that rich until the tail end of his investing career. So property markets typically run in cycles and obviously demand and supply rises and falls with different economic conditions. Therefore, property prices will never increase in a linear fashion like the example that I showed and I don't personally expect it to either. But we will typically experience you know, ups and downs through growth rates over multiple property cycles over time. But eventually, if you hold it long enough, it will average out over the long term. Now, there's a lot more involved in property investment than just this compound growth. It is the best bit, and there's a lot of time spent managing your rental cash flow and managing your mortgage payments and financing and maintaining the physical property itself and insurances and property tax. There's a lot of other stuff that you need to take care of. But compound growth makes it all worth it in the end. And if you do want to find out how I personally manage my cash flow on all my investment properties, let me know and I can make a future video about how I manage my properties while being based here in Singapore for work. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A bit of a change up. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end. Smash that like button if you've liked the idea of compound growth and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos about property and stocks in particular and come on my journey to, to achieve financial freedom one day. And I'll see you guys in the next video.